Hello, good morning to you, and many thanks for joining us. You're watching Galaxy today, coming to you from Galaxy Television. It's the House Edition. My name is Justin Akadoni, and I'm Joseph Oko. Like Justin said, it's a Health Edition today. We'll be discussing asthma. Now, do you know one or two persons suffering from that condition? You want to sit down and listen to some of the courses on how this Ill, um, Ill, illness can be managed. Of course, um, it's on record that about 1.5 million Nigerians, you know, are either suffering from this condition or have reported this case in the hospital before. And that's to show how important it is it for us to treat it today. All right, are you having some symptoms that have to deal with some coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath, and of course, tightness of the chest? You just might be. Um, having asthma but then we have doctors who will be discussing uh, the issues with us of all that you need to know and please uh, feel free to interact with us as we do on the health edition if you have a question for the doctors uh, feel free to do so if you have um, if you're asthmatic and uh, you just want to let people know how you've been able to manage it yourself what you've been doing you know uh, please uh, feel free to share you can also do that on social media uh, using the hashtag and galaxy today we have a pulmonologist uh, joining us from the national um, hospital in abuja and we will uh, expecting uh, a public health practitioner here in our lagos studios before we join our studios in abuja let us uh, give you a background information on asthma Asthma is a common long-term inflammatory disease of the airways of the lungs. It is characterized by variable and recurrent symptoms, reversible airflow obstruction and bronchospasm. Symptoms include episodes of wheezing, coughing, chest tightness and shortness of breath. These episodes may occur a few times a day or a few times per week. Depending on the person, they become worst at night or with exercise. Asthma is thought to be caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Environmental factors include exposure to air pollution and allergens. Other potential triggers include medications such as aspirin and beta blockers. Diagnosis is usually based on the pattern of symptoms, response to therapy over time and spirometry. Asthma is classified according to the frequency of symptoms. Forced expiratory volume in one second, FEV1, and peak expiratory flow rate. It may also be classified as atopic or non-atopic, where atopy refers to a predisposition towards developing a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. There is no cure for asthma. Symptoms can be prevented by avoiding triggers such as allergens and irritants and by the use of inhaled corticosteroids, long-acting beta agonist LABAO, Anti-leukotriene agents may be used in addition to inhaled corticosteroids if asthma symptoms remain uncontrolled. <music> Treatment of rapidly worsening symptoms is usually with an inhaled short-acting beta-2 agonist such as sabutamol and corticosteroids taken by mouth. In very severe cases, intravenous corticosteroids, magnesium sulfate and hospitalization may be required. In 2015, 358 million people globally had asthma, up from 183 million in 1990. It caused about 397,100 deaths in 2015, most of which occurred in the developing world. It often begins in childhood. The rate of asthma has increased significantly since the 1960s. you're watching Galaxy Today, the health edition, and we are looking at asthma on the show this morning. 
just to remind you once again that uh, you can be a part of this discussion. Uh, feel free to interact with us, join the conversation on social media by using the hashtag Galaxy Today. You can do that on Facebook, Instagram, on Twitter. All right, and of course, you can send us an SMS uh, too if you have a question for our doctors. Let us begin from Abuja there right now. We have um, a pulmonologist joining us from the National Hospital in Abuja, Dr. Kingsley Osage. Many thanks for joining us on Galaxy today. All right, we're looking at asthma on the show this morning. I just want to get, uh, you know, a bit of a clarity uh, just to make some people understand what's the difference, you know, uh, between asthma and ordinary cough or maybe whooping cough. very much. Asthma, by definition, uh, is a disease. Uh, and of course, the hallmark of that is that uh, you have inflammation of the airways. Inflammation of the airways. And this kind of manifests by wheezing, coughing, chest tightness and most of the time if this happens at night and of course the 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 severity and uh, the, the the degree of airway uh, of You will have a period of uh, uh, issues with all those chest tightness, cough, and all that. And of course, for cough, ordinary cough, you can, uh, cough, cough, you can just maybe have uh, pneumonia, you know, you're coughing, and the, the cough goes. That is okay. And of course, if you are, like you said, whooping cough. It's a disease that is continuous. Well, you know, it's something that uh, the patient may have to live with for a very long time, if not for the rest of his or her life. So, hello. All right, uh, would uh, still try and reconnect with Dr. Kingsley Osaki after this uh, quick timeout. Uh, do join us again. Asthma is a common long-term inflammatory disease of the airways of the lungs. It is characterized by variable and recurrent symptoms, reversible airflow obstruction and bronchospasm. Symptoms include episodes of wheezing, coughing, chest tightness, and shortness of breath. These episodes may occur a few times a day or a few times per week. Depending on the person, they become worse at night or with exercise. Asthma is thought to be caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Environmental factors include exposure to air pollution and allergens. Other potential triggers include medications such as aspirin and beta blockers. Diagnosis is usually based on the pattern of symptoms, response to therapy over time and spirometry. Asthma is classified according to the frequency of symptoms. Forced expiratory volume in one second, FEV1 and peak expiratory flow rate. It may also be classified as atopic or non-atopic, where atopy refers to a predisposition towards developing a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. There is no cure for asthma. 
Symptoms can be prevented by avoiding triggers such as allergens and irritants and by the use of inhaled corticosteroids. Long-acting beta agonist LABAO Anti-leukotriene agents may be used in addition to inhaled corticosteroids if asthma symptoms remain uncontrolled. Treatment of rapidly worsening symptoms is usually with an inhaled short-acting beta-2 agonist such as subutamol and corticosteroids taken by mouth. In very severe cases, intravenous corticosteroids, magnesium sulfate and hospitalization may be required. In 2015, 358 million people globally had asthma, up from 183 million in 1990. It caused about 397,100 deaths in 2015, most of which occurred in the developing world. It often begins in childhood. The rate of asthma have increased significantly since the 1960s. Okay, welcome back. You're still on to Galaxy today, and it's a health edition today, and we're talking asthma. Before the break, we were discussing with um, a doctor from Abuja, but fortunately we lost connection. But now we've been joined by another doctor here in Lagos, um, Dr. Tui Member Wundu. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, uh, we're talking asthma, and the um, doctor was trying to tell us, you know, the different kinds of um, asthma. You know, there are a whole lot of lung um, diseases. So how can we really tell which is whooping cough, which is asthma, which is which, basically? Um, essentially, uh, when we're talking about asthma, that we're referring to bronchial asthma. That's one that is specific to the lungs, because there are other things that could cause that kind of sort of breathing, and then may not actually be a bronchial asthma. So um, the distinction is we should lie with the doctor. That is it, because uh, it's not for the lay person to then be able to say this is the kind of asthma I'm having or that. Um, but the basic uh, findings is the fact that uh, there's a cough, there's tightness of the chest, there's difficulty in breathing, there's fatigue, there's a wheezing or musical sound as a result of the cough. The essential problem is the fact that there's a narrowing. Because when you take air in, the air has to flow through some pipes to be a change at the level of the cell with your lungs. The air you take in contains oxygen, the oxygen you use to break down the food and provide the energy you need to do your work. So the, the oxygen is essential and you must exchange the oxygen at a particular location and a, in a particular state uh, with uh, your body. Apart from you know, exchange the oxygen, you have to take away the waste which is carbon dioxide and give it out. Okay, so the passages, you know, I mean, because there are pipes from your nose tree down to the lungs before you get to the cells that they change those things. Um, when there's a narrowing of those, of those pipes, you know, then you then have those kind of experience. There's narrowing, there's a swelling inside the thing, a lot of things are released. And then the passage of air through those pipes to a change will now be compromised. And then you hear those sounds, and then you feel tired, you are breathless, um, and then um, you cough, essentially. Mm -hmm. So that is that. But again, if you're talking about asthma and you're trying to look at the types, um, there's one that is caused by allergy, which you call mm -hmm. atopic asthma, and there's one that you call intrinsic asthma. That's in terms of uh, classification. There are other ones that we call exercise induced. Uh, some people you see that it's only when they do exercise that those things kind of come up, you know. And then um, we if you look at the level of public health and you look at the environment, we seem to be having an increasing number of cases of asthma and respiratory diseases. Um, why is this so? Because there are a lot of pollutants in the environment that tend to drive, that's one thing, okay? There's a lot of pollutants that tend to drive uh, the asthma. We call them triggers. You know, triggers are things that can just happen 
and you know a cost and occurrence of an asthmatic attack. So um, even in some instances you may not have the classical symptoms that we've mentioned above. It can be insidious, kind of. The person just find that every time you run nose, you have running nose, and every time you just cough like that and feel tightness in the chest. It will not be classical, but until you then have to do what they call a, a, a pulmonary function test, where they have to breathe into a spirometer and find out the level of compromise that is happening at the level of the lungs. And let us face it, there could be sounds that could wheeze or the musical mm. um, that may not be as far. So but, the distinction is important. Important and the only thing that make that decision is not if somebody is suffering it. It is the doctor, the doctor. who can do it. All right, Dr. T, we'll come back to you. We're getting signals again from Abuja. Uh, let's rejoin Dr. Kingsley Osage. Uh, he, uh, he is a pulmonologist at the National Hospital. Uh, in Abuja. Doctor, many thanks for joining us once again. You know, we've tried to break down um, the um, asthma, what it is, what it is not, and of course, but uh, one other thing that we always hear from asthmatic patients uh, is that of attack. Can you explain what an asthmatic attack is to us? Thank you very much. Um, so the layman, they call uh, Asthma. Uh, period of attack, which is characterized by wheezing. You know, first you will be hearing say he he as the patient is breathing, and of course chest tightness. Most of the time, when they cough, they bring out white, whitish and slimy uh, sputum. Uh, sputum, and so of course for some, for some. This is accompanied by some chest infection. Of course, maybe that chest infection is one that you precipitated the attack. So that's, this is basically what happens. And of course, when, when treated, the patient goes into uh, periods of symptom-free. Uh, and then when, when the patient is exposed again to triggers, and some of these triggers we will identify as, we are, as the discussion goes on. And that includes include, some, for some people, cold fumes, uh, maybe cigarette smoke, um, uh, house dust mite. Uh, some for some for some other people when they are exposed to moles in their houses, and of course they start having this uh, attack. That's typically what an attack is. And an attack can either be mild, in which case uh, just mild attack. Uh, we we'll still try and reconnect with you. We we'll are still uh, um, experiencing a uh, signal fluctuation there. All right, Doctor Tuyi uh, Mebwondo. Let's still talk more about um, the attacks. Uh, you know, he was uh, the doctor in Abuja was explaining more to us about um, the attacks. But when um, an asthmatic patient uh, is down with an attack, you know, how long does it really take before he get, uh, he or she gets back to normalcy? Now, um, first and foremost, the, like uh, Dr. Osage was trying to say, attack could be mild, moderate, mm -hmm. severe. And we could have what we call a status asthmaticus, where the attack is really life-threatening. Um, now, the, what, first and foremost, it depends on the trigger. Okay? Um, because if you, if for instance, if a person has a respiratory tract infection that is a trigger, if you don't deal with that respiratory tract infection, the trigger continues, and those, what they call reactive substances, are released and further narrow the airway. So, the, uh, in a way, if the attack is mild, it can then, after some rest and then calm down, it can resolve on its own. Um, but, you know, uh, in a moderate to severe attack, you would definitely need to do, put some intervention to ensure that the attack does not really progress and lead to a status asthmaticus, which is a, a grave emergency. So um, the first thing is for the person to understand, you know, what are his own triggers 
And secondly, to be able to respond, at least there must be a first aid response. Because asthma does not respect age. It can happen in children, it can happen in adults, it can happen in women, you know, and men. You know, and then you see more of the attack often in the boys than the females. So the person, once the person is matured, the person must be able to have a basic response. But when the person is not uh, mature enough to take decision on its own, the family must have a basic understanding and response. And of course, the response starts from the household and the living environment. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, dust mites, we're talking about, you know, the, there are droppings from cockroaches. They have their droppings from cockroaches. As those cockroaches and they said run around your house, they, they're droppings. These droppings dry up. They are very, very, very irritant. They, you know, that if dries up, flies into the air, and if anybody breathes, it becomes a problem. In some houses, that is, the, the, the where molds close on the wall and the molds dry up and, you know, throw something up, then it becomes a really serious issue. Then if you have pets, the, the feathers, you know, or, mm -hmm. or, or yes, those feathers are the force of the pest which we call dandas, can also, you know, be a big cause of allergy, you know, um, in those class. Then um, in seasonal cases, when the flowers are blooming and, you know, the flowers are being discharged into the environment, this can also precipitate attack. And then in the um, other part of the world where there are flu seasons, so then you then see more of those attacks. So the first thing is for the environmental understanding at the level of the person who is asthmatic and the family and they should know what they ought to do to prevent serious occurrence. Um, that is important. Um, the, obviously, in those kind of houses, you don't want to put rock because you know that putting rock will rouse dust, will collect dust, dust will fly off and then can trigger an attack. So you want a clean environment, you want the dust to be limited, you want a clean uh, window, you want to prevent as much as possible, you know, uh, things that will bring dust into the environment of such person. So, and the person must be able to have a basic understanding of what he or she needs to do should there be uh, an attack. Okay. I'm interested in knowing why attacks are more frequent in males than in females. Um, there are things in medicine that you see it happens. But again, one of the things is that let's appreciate the fact that the males are more prone to activities. Uh, they do a lot of outdoor things, they run around, and then so that could be a factor, really, because um, it's when you talk about exercise, uh, sports, and all that stuff, you see that more in males. And then when you start going around, you see, even see that more in males. So that could be a factor. But again, in medicine, um, when we observe something, we observe it, sometimes you may have explanation, sometimes you don't have explanation why it happens. So it then stimulates your interest to understand then why could this be happening. So a, again, um, for us at the level of public health is to look at the what are the proper intervention at the public health level, what are we supposed to do, what is the information we're putting out there to help those people who are asthmatic, how we connect them to um, help centers, you know. Um, because you know, when a status asthmatic occurs, there's a stickiness, there's virtual lockdown. Of the of the pipes, you know, uh, referring uh, air from outside to the inside, you know, virtual lockdown. And even at that time, all the whistles that you think you are going to hear, you may not hear it. The chest becomes silent, and that's a grievous danger. The blood pressure become become and then the pulse become treading. So those are grievous danger. And then the temperature rises up. So those are critical changes and uh, uh, critical situation in someone with asthmatic. So then. The ability to then take them to a center may be hampered based on one, the level of knowledge available to the family of the sufferer or the sufferer, that's the first thing. Secondly, ability to assess, you know, look at, for instance, in Lagos, um, you can be locked down by the traffic and then, you know, nobody have respect for the, for the ambulances. So, and then, they are, before you know it, it may be even really be very difficult. They have to, sometimes they have to cut open the windpipe, which you call tracheostomy, to remove, yeah. you know, thick focus and then reoxygenate the person. It could, it's such a big issue. But um, especially during this time now, uh, during this, where we find out that we're seeing more of allergy, more of uh, asthmatic-related or reactive airway diseases 
in this part of the world because um, one of the theories that uh, nowadays people don't get exposed to jams like we used to do those days mm. and then be able to you know be able to deal with those things and then secondly you know we uh, environment has been so neglected uh, look at the federal environmental protection agency if you look at the quality of the air we're breathing in, in this part of the world especially in our urban cities it's, it's very very worrisome okay. so okay. these are the things we need to do at the level of environment to reduce the level of pollutants and irritants we take in. Uh, if you see those vehicles driving with, with acrid, thick smoke, those things for an asthmatic, mm -hmm. not even asthmatic enough for anybody, it's, it's a big danger. danger. Okay, Doctor, uh, let's uh, rejoin uh, Abuja yet again. Uh, thank you for holding on, Dr. Osage. Uh, Dr. Tui, you remember one that's been able to talk to us about some public health concerns, uh, specifically as regards uh, the environment and the kind of air that we breathe. I want to talk about management right now because I see a whole lot of um, um, asthmatic and patients uh, uh, use um, inhalers. You know, let's talk about these inhalers. You know, the use you know for asthma is it something you have to use like a daily basis or just necessarily when you are down with um, an attack or just how does it really work? Thank you very much. Uh, the inhaler, uh, I'll say, is a means of delivering the needed medication that the asthma patient need uh, to the airways, to, to, so that you can have uh, relief. Of course, this inhaler comes with different medications. What, some can come with what we call the liver medications, like uh, the popular Ventolin that we see that has for support amount, or abuterol. But some other inhaler comes with controller medication that has inhaled corticosteroid plus long-acting beta-2 agonist. So, and they come in different forms. They come as uh, metadose, pressurized metadose inhaler, or this, the discourse form, the, you see it, it looks like a, a snail form, or they can come as handy inhaler, the one you just, uh, it's very handy, of course you have to, it, it depends on the ability of the patient to be able to inhale these drugs. So this inhaler, like I said, is just a, a tool to deliver the needed medication into the system. And because asthma is something that is, uh, is there, is, we, we can only control it, we can, it doesn't really so what, what, what we are emphasizing here that the asthmatic must use his, his or her medication every day. Every day. But for the reliever medication, which is like Ventolin and all that, we, we advise that it is used, as the name implies, reliever, when you have the, as I was saying, the attack. But for the one that control controller medication, that controls the inflammation, which is the basis you know, for the asthma even. Because some people might say, okay, we don't, we are not, I'm not, I, I don't have attack, so I'm free of asthma. It's, that is a major lie, because even if you are not having exacerbation, which we call attack commonly, the inflammation is ongoing in the lungs. So that is why we advise our patient to use the controller medication every day. And then, of course, follow up by coming for assessment. We need to assess the patient and the adjust, because currently that is what the guideline says, that if you prescribe medication for the patient, the patient uses uh, continuously for three months. After three months, you come in, we they assess you, and either adjust upwards or adjust uh, downwards, based on the, our, the result of our assessment. If you are doing well on it, yes, we can decide to maintain it or reduce it. But if you are not doing well on the controller medication, which includes the inhaled corticosteroid and uh, long-acting beta-2 agonists. Uh, they all have different types, many of them in the market, so we, uh, I wouldn't want to patronize anyone now. But of course, if you see your doctor, you'll be able to prescribe it. And if you use it correctly, and you're supposed to come again after three months for reassessment, and after we, are, we assess you as, oh, you are doing very well, we can either maintain it or reduce the medication, or if you are not doing very well, we increase the medication so that we achieve uh, a good control. 
So to answer your question clearly, an asthmatic will need to be using the controller medication daily. But when he has an exacerbation, like a mild exacerbation, they can now use whatever medication, uh, like uh, the popular ventolin. And I must uh, also emphasize here, the technique is very important. For a lot of, a lot of uh, patients, they are just given the inhaler, they are not taught how to use it. It is more important to know how to use the inhaler than just having the inhaler. Some people spray it like perfume, you'll be surprised. Now oh, I've used my inhaler today. They was, they was, they demonstrate how, how you used it. You say spraying it on the body. So the, the, it is important for anybody that is prescribing an inhaler to a patient to follow up by demonstrating how to use the inhaler, the inhaler proper technique of using the, that inhaler so that we will be able to deliver the needed medication. Because some people just put it in the, in the amount, they are not able to to, to, to take in the medication and then they say oh they have used it and at the end of the day they still come back with uh, uh, symptoms they say oh, my asthma is not uh, this medicine is not working or the asthma is not controlled so it is more important for us to know how to use to teach our patient how to use the, the inhaler inhaler technique and of course if you are using inhaler you have both uh, reliever medication inhalers and controller medication inhaler but for the controller medication inhalers, it is meant to be used daily. And the essence is to prevent attack. So it is not better to prevent than, you know, for you to start treating attack, an attack, having exacerbation. And then, of course, you now, now, you now need other forms of treatment, which includes nebulizers, you know, even uh, uh, injection, uh, aminophilin, and all that. But if you use your controller medication very well and you avoid triggers you are more likely not to even need the reliever medication uh, in, in, in future so that some of the yastic we used to know whether we, you are your asthma is very controlled or is not very controlled that need for the reliever medication which the popular inhaler that everybody knows ventolin ventolin that is not the only inhaler we use for asthma okay all right, doctor. Um, besides the normal assessment you talked about, um, a whole lot of asthma patients, they go about with um, inhalers, like you also mentioned. Um, some people, without inhalers, they can't even go out um, as if their life depends on it, which might even be the case. But does that suggest that asthma doesn't have a cure? Would they have to subject themselves to an inhaler throughout their lifetime? As, we, as I speak to you today, tomorrow the, the situation may be different. As I speak to you today, asthma has no cure, but it can be treated. It's treatable. Uh, which, what I mean by treatable, you can manage it, and then you live your life, your normal life. An asthmatic can live a normal life as if it doesn't have asthma. If he follows the prescribed medication, avoid the triggers and all that. So for, for those that feel that, oh, I can't... Uh, 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 leave the house without my inhaler, without uh, do, uh, that or their uh, Maybe you, they need another assessment. If you are not, that means they are not doing well. We assess the patient. Would when the patient comes in, we we'll do a uh, spirometry for the patient, able to know is this patient doing well or not. And of course, the patient can also do even home assessment. Like uh, this equipment I'm holding here, we we'll call it the peak flow meter. The patient blows into it when the patient is uh, is okay, that is not having any attack, and they have a personal best. And the, everybody's personal best is different. Somebody's personal best can be 500, another personal, another one's personal best can be 600 or 700. Now, when the patient now have attack, that is, so the patient will now breathe into this equipment. That, if you look at it very well, you see a red button here. But then you blow into it, the red button moves. So when it moves, it tells you how much, and you can see that it's calibrated. It is from 100 to uh, even 900. So when you, the, 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 this red button moves, that, that tells you how much you are able to breathe out. And so by the time you are getting anything above 50% uh, of that, your personal best, 
then we can say, well, you are having mild to moderate attack. But if you get anything below 50% of your personal best, that is a severe attack, and it's not the one that you start treating at home. So that is the time to start coming to the hospital and get hospital treatment. Okay? So in summary, well, you will need uh, uh, this liver medication daily, and of course, that is kind of that kind of prevent uh, uh, attack, and of course modify the disease. The truth about it is that as we speak today, there's no cure, and you can manage it and live your life, normal life. We have had asthmatic who has become president, who will be champions in Olympics. Uh, so many, so you can you know tennis uh, uh, champions and all that. So you can actually live your life normally without uh, uh, any stress but i have to say that uh, if there's a cure uh, i would i would rely to you uh, so there's no there's no cure for now we can manage it and so that's why we are uh, advising every asthmatic to see their doctor get assessed because everybody's case is treated differently get assessed properly and then end up with what we call an action plan Every asthmatic must have an action plan. That action plan will contain what the patient reacts to and all that and what the patient needs to modify, both within and without. What I mean by within, even in the, the, the house, because some people may be living in a place where you have the walls damp, and then, of course, if you're living there, as an asthmatic, you will keep having what we call attack, exacerbation. So you must either move away from there or modify that environment. And of course, some people may use, like rug, the use of rug is not advisable for an asthmatic, you know. And then frying of your things, frying food and all that, if people are doing it, you are not supposed to be there because you may uh, react have, and it will lead to an asthmatic attack. And of course, acute asthma exacerbation has also been linked to even uh, the use of uh, mosquito coil, cockroaches, in the house, you will be surprised. Uh, animals, so for people that if an asthmatic is keeping animals, hello, if an asthmatic that is keeping animals, they can get uh, uh, allergies from the, 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 the hairs of the animal, and they do, that can also pro provide, uh, pro promote that. Those that inward, out, outward, you can see fumes in the people that lives, people that lives in uh, where you have uh, quarry, People that, uh, uh, if, you, if you're living around uh, where they smoke cigarettes, cigarette smoking, particularly the, what we see now in the, in the, in the gardens and, uh, and the club, then of course it can also uh, affect that. Of course, if you live in cities where you have a lot of industry and you have fumes everywhere, it can also affect the way the asthmatic uh, will turn out. So all these things have to be identified and avoid it. Thank you very much. As much as we can take from your end because of time, we've been speaking to Dr. Kingsley Osage. He is a pulmonologist from the National Hospital um, in Abuja. Many thanks for joining us on Galaxy today. Now, Dr. Tui, let us talk more about um, some public health concerns, specifically for people who want to build families, you know, and uh, they've been trying. I'm talking about a lot of exp personal experience. Now, I have a friend uh, who, um, who has a wife, and um, she is a smart but over time, they keep on having issues during pregnancy. What would you advise? Ah, well, um, let, let's appreciate the fact that even some of the triggers of uh, an asthmatic attack could be pregnancy itself. Anything that imposes stress. Um, it, as simple as it sounds, anger could trigger asthmatic attack. I've heard of laughter too. Yeah, anger could trigger asthmatic attack. Mm. Asthmatic attack, attack could worsen mm. anger. So, you know, um, but having said that, you know, the key thing is for the family to un understand where they're coming from. Mm. Um, so he has a wife who's asthmatic, who's going to get pregnant who's going to be involved in doing a lot of household chores. So then, how do we really deal with this anger? So that means essentially, um, you need to do a lot of environmental, I mean, basic environmental adjustment, you know, uh, in a way that, how is the house set, uh, set around? Uh, do you have flowers in the house? Are you going to put drugs there? 
Is it quite airy? Is the roof quite airy? Do you have uh, something that can suck the smoke away from the kitchen so that those triggers don't really come on? So, and then, or do we want to look for someone who can do those frying and cooking so that the wife does not actually have to smell them every time? So, I think basically, by the time they speak to the doctor and then they look at the pattern of how they live the, the house, they shouldn't have problems. I, I have quite a number of close friends that. The wives are asthmatic and they have children, they are living good and they maintain the thing. So but, but everybody must have your own special plan, peculiar plan, plan regards to how your asthma should manage. How do you do this plan? You sit down with your doctor. The doctor takes a full assessment, or even your health worker, take a full assessment of your household, your environment, the kind of work you do, and you know, then take a, a diary of your triggers, you know, because you must be able to, after something, understood some of your triggers, and then the man will suggest, the doctor or the health worker will suggest some of the likely triggers, and then you identify the one that actually is causing your own trigger and avoid those things. Then your drug plan will be so basic. Yes, it's both control and then uh, uh, treatment of an attack. We want to dwell on those consistency with your control medications. There are simple drugs that you need to take, but just one a day as an inhaler or as an oral drug, depending on the severity. You, if you have catar or even cough or you run fever, that means that you need to treat it appropriately, you know, and with proper medication because even infection, chest infection, can be a trigger of an asthmatic attack. So it's not just that, uh, you know, I have, uh, let me take, uh, I have a catar, let me just take this and it will go. No. In fact, by the time, Someone who's asthmatic is having recurrent um, respiratory infection, recurrent catar. Be, be, watch out. You need to probably check the drug the person is using, look at the triggers, or even listen to the chest so that he's, he's now trying to have a mild attack. So these are very key. And then even the work environment, uh, you know, you need to look at it. You cannot definitely be riding on a, on a dusty vehicle you know, without even some basic face mask to help you. <coughs> So I think from all, we, all you've said, it's um, really important for us to know how we conduct ourselves around people because the triggers can be different. What's the trigger yeah, for Mr. Perfumes, a? yes. You know, yeah. Especially in this era of mm. perfumes, for some people, you know, um, while I was, um, you know, studying abroad, um, normally when, when you resume like that in Scandinavia, um, the accommodation will be very, the accommodation is very serious. People then offer you to stay in one of their rooms for a fee. So it's okay, you see a notice either in the newspaper or whatever or somewhere that, listen, if you are a foreign student and you want to stay around, a man specifically mentioned that the condition is that you don't want anybody with perfume at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know this, these are common things in your interaction and environment, perfume everywhere. These are the things that can actually trigger you know, uh, asthmatic attack. So the key thing is to identify your trigger, but whether the person is Pregnant, there's a specific, specific way of managing somebody, a lady who is asthmatic and pregnant. Don't forget there's a genetic component to it. So if you have a family that's asthmatic, the chance of, of in the one of your offspring having an asthma or relating or atopic, or instead of atopy, eczema, dermatitis, and all those things, those are the things that can actually be a pointer to like people having an asthma. But still talking about management or treatment, would you subscribe to alternative? medicine, you know, apart from the orthodox medicine, inhalers and all of that. You know, there are some people who will tell you acupuncture works perfectly for um, asthma. Others will even go using herbs. Yeah, drink garlic. Yeah, yeah, and all of that. Uh, well, let, let's first, first and foremost, we, we need to be conscious of our environment, okay? What do I mean by environment? We're in Nigeria. Uh, we're not Chinese people. Those ones are the ones that have passed acupuncture to an extent. Because we must not fall into the hands of fakes, frauds, and malakis. We can't fall into the hands of frauds. And, and, and one of the things that drove those kind of mistreatment is, um, is lack of adequate information. We're now pushing information in the public domain for people to understand. So for me, how far have we gone in terms of experience in managing asthmatic people with herbs, in managing them with acupuncture, can we have a documented evidence to see that, well, this is a preferred method, you know, when compared to the, the, the standard one? 
Um, and then we see people, charlatans that they push their luck and tell you that, you know what? We do cure as, asthma. We see those things, those days we enter bus. Yes. We see posters, cure for asthma, this yes. and that, HIV and all those People just put the poster there. And an ignorant person could just say, oh, finally I found a cure. But no. <laughs> if, if they understand the basis of asthma, they know that it's not something you can cure. But again, you can do sports, do everything once you control your asthma. So for me, even if, as much as I'm not telling you that herbs cannot help, mm -hmm. as much as I'm not telling you that other alternative treatment like garlic and all those things cannot help, we must be able to have a documented evidence of effectiveness of that. Um, and then we know that life science, the way, tend to define the extent of the frequency and extent of asthma. Yes, that, those are basics. We know that even people that can take some type of food, like prawn, shrimps, can mm -hmm. actually, you know, get it triggered. We know that an ordinary aspirin, you know, or, or, or a lab as the case may be, can trigger some drugs. Mm -hmm. Ordinary drug for hypertension can trigger asthma. So we know all those things. But herbs and all those things, yeah, herbs will have some beneficial effect. But we should start, in this our environment, we should start documenting evidences to see the benefit and be, so that we can present it people can discuss it and then if it works uh, equally then we then um, you know embrace it as a cheaper mode of treatment but before then until we do that we can then we cannot start parroting acupuncture uh, prayer warrior herbs <laughs> and all that i mean that's the yes, answer all right, feel free. I don't call this number. If you have a question for Dr. T, remember what do do send us an SMS and he will attend to the questions. You can also interact with us on social media using the hashtag Galaxy today. All right, doctor, you've said so much about um, uh, three years and so much about what to avoid and uh, what to do. But I think I have a question for you here. This one says, uh, <laughs> We're not talking about eye problems, so we cannot even answer and begin to treat that question. He's asking what kind of glasses he could actually wear. All right, uh, don't call, just uh, send us an SMS if you have um, a question. Okay, fine, doctor, you've talked about uh, you know what we need to do. What about workplaces now? I know uh, uh, you know sometimes some people you know when they have their attacks, they cannot really work. Um, they cannot really do most things. Uh, would you suggest that? Um, you know, they take it easy, they don't uh, carry, on, carry on too much responsibilities, or what would you suggest? Uh, uh, again, uh, you, you, you have work has to be done. Uh, but part of the basic uh, medical examination mm -hmm. for at the entrance level into workplace is for us to understand the, the things the person is having, how to utilize the person maximally without, cause, without harm to himself, without further degeneration of his health status. And of course, in that situation, if somebody is asthmatic, you, then you, can, you understand the trigger, then that means that the person is an airy place, dust-free, away from perfume people as much as possible. Um, of course, like um, the other doctor mentioned, there are great sports people, yeah. you know, champions, you know, that are asthmatic. Asthmatic, yeah. Champions. So even in some, extra, some level of exercise improves the pulmonary function and help reduce the frequency Hmm. of asthma depending on your own trigger. Mm -hmm. So the workplace should be structured in, such, in, in, in a way that helps to, you know, to prevent exposure to triggers and then make the place comfortable for the person. Um, uh, besides, um, the, the person itself, who the, the, the asthmatic who is at the workplace, must have basic intervention you know, that can be used should he have an acute exacerbation Mm. Of the of the asthmatic uh, condition, but beyond that, it's not a big deal. People walk, do okay. everything, you know, and then. Uh, there is a question for you here, doctor. Uh, this one is Dami uh, from Ibadan also, uh, and he's asking if um, asthma can be operated. Oh no! It's, um, by the time you get to where you have to do surgical intervention for asthma, mm. that, we're talking about status asthma because those are grave emergencies. When the Thick mucus stuck, gets stuck into the bronchial, you know, branches. Affects breathing. Yes, it will just stuck and close the passage completely. In that situation, um, the, the bronchoscopy where they have to actually 
put something there and remove the tick because you know, or you know, when they have to do a tracheostomy, you know, cut through the trachea to ventilate and open the place of a food ventilator. Those are the extreme cases. I mean, apart from that, as far as a simple thing, um, in a way, if you want to maintain it, we don't get to the point, point of surgery at all, you know, as far as as far as concerned. Okay, uh, this, one, one, this one is asking one more question. If there are specific foods that can actually promote, um, you know, respiratory um, tract. Uh, well, the, the, one of the things that keeps promoting the tract is, um, of course, to do breathing, proper breathing exercise, you know, um, and then uh, we know that normally all our fruits and vegetables can help, but if you are allergic to nuts, nuts. You, if you are allergic to nuts, you need, you need to avoid nuts because that can also serve as a trigger. Um, apart from that, you know, uh, normal food. When you say breathing exercises, what do you mean exactly? I, uh, what I'm saying is that, you see, um, most of us, when we breathe, we, we should start to our breathing. We must be able to okay, sit down and take a deep breathing. You know, deep breathing that goes down completely, held, and you, t you breathe out. Because that will help the whole oxygenation of a part of because they are what we call dead space in the lung. Mm -hmm. That no matter how you breathe, you cannot expel the air that are there. You understand? So. So the, what the breathing exercise does is to help you permit every part of the lung space because when you take a deep breathing in and hold it in and then breathe out slowly, you are mm -hmm. giving the pulmonary function better uh, performance in a way. Okay, so my name is Watai from Ojodu. Uh, doctor, is it regular or normal to have a big or protruded uh, stomach during an asthmatic um, attack? Well, you see, because... Um, it is not normal. Let, let's be fair. Once you know your, your, normal for, your normal shape of your body and you're having an attack and you're having producing something, then you know that you, know, you are getting to a level where the uh, imbalance in the gaseous exchange, serious imbalance in the mm -hmm. gaseous exchange, um, it, can, it shouldn't be. It can't be normal. Once the attack goes down, your, your distance should go down. So mm -hmm. the focus is to prevent an attack, you know, to control your asthma, and when a serious attack happens, then you need to understand where to go for intervention. Okay, finally, uh, this one says, um, I'm asthmatic and I've heard you say that um, it could be congenital. Is there a way I can stop uh, my child from having asthma? Uh, well, w the only thing we can say that your child has a risk mm. of having asthma because, again, one of the best things you can do is really to be sure that you don't get married to somebody who has history of atopy. Then the okay. chance will, will increase, you know. So, but as it is, um, you, you may not be able to do much about genes mm. because the pattern of inheritance is complex, okay? It's complex. So, you may not be able to do anything about genes. But having said that, um, even when the child is, is born, there are a few things you could do in terms of, um, you know, avoiding um, critical situations that could cause trigger. Okay. You should have known your own trigger now, okay. you know. So, but the best you can do is to run away from somebody who is probably asthmatic because the risk becomes higher for the okay. child. Two more questions, but I guess one of them has already be, uh, been answered. He's asking if um, asthma has a cure. No, asthma doesn't have a cure. Yeah, no cure. Uh, that's what they're saying. But you can maintain it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, is asthma uh, contagious? No, okay, ah, that's a very good yeah. question. Because people tend to think that if you stay near an asthmatic, you can pick it. No, mm. capital no. Asthma is not contagious. Asthma, asthma cannot be passed from one person sitting near you to you. No, no. Um, but there are conditions that look asthmatic mm. that are not necessarily because you know, the wheezing diseases, you know, mm. all these that cause those kind of wheezing that they cause mm. in breathing. Mm. You'll be surprised that sometimes people that think that they have asthma, they may actually have a tuberculosis. So in that wise, it's different. If there's somebody coughing, you know, frequently besides you, always figure out that it may not just be asthma, mm. it will also be it's tuberculosis. So those ones are contagious. But okay. asthma as itself, no. It's not contagious. It's not contagious. Uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have to so go. A lot of people time. are sending questions at the 11th hour, uh, asking, uh, can an adult at the age of 25 to 40 years develop asthma? It, uh, it, no respect. Asthma is no respect. It can't even have growing. Can yeah. it lead to t tuberculosis? Another question. 
where tuberculosis can cause asthma symptoms because of pressure okay. on one of those pipes. Oh. Symptom, not, it's not, it doesn't mean that tuberculosis is the cause of the asthma. Yeah. Okay. It can bring that wheezing that okay. simulate mm. or act like asthma. That is okay. the tuberculosis can. Is catar a symptom? Yeah, you could have frequent, you could, if you are atopic, mm. that is you are allergic, you could mm. have frequent catar. The catar okay. will come frequently, you know, and then it could be a precursor. Hmm. to have any full blown uh, aspartic uh, aquarium. We can out take of time. any more. We're completely out of time. Many thanks to you, Dr. Chi. Uh, it's my Lebanon. pleasure any time. He Thank is you. a public um, health practitioner. Earlier, we had um, a pulmonologist joining us from Abuja, the National Hospital, Dr. Kingsley Osagi. But that's our show for today. Many thanks for being a part of it. My name is Justin Akadoni. And thanks for joining us. My name is Joseph Eko. The show is back tomorrow for a big and better package. Have a nice day.